Hey there, Jay Linesider. Today I want to talk to you about a little known subject matter and that's using shrimp tail jigs on large jig heads for large snook. And um, this is kind of a little known art that I've been practicing since probably 2004, 2005 and still do it today. It involves using a jig head somewhere in the one ounce to one and a half ounce size and hopping it along the bottom uh, in a certain retrieve method, which I'll go into detail in a minute, and um, getting a reaction strike from the, sh from the snook. The snook uh, will in invariably see the jig going down like this and then will try to intercept it before it hits the bottom. Most of your hits are going to be right before it bounces off the bottom. Now, because of the rocks and other obstructions, uh, you don't want to let your jig stay on the bottom. So what you're going to be doing is basically as soon as it hits the bottom, you're going to be jerking your rod back up and you want to move that jig with the shrimp tail on it. You want to move it about this far, about three three feet uh, not three feet probably like 18 24 inches you know just just do your best to replicate you know a good bounce like this and um, here's the jig I'm talking about this is a H style jig head one and a half ounce that I poured myself from a do it mold of course you can tell this thing's been around uh, it's been bouncing around and I kind of lost all my powder paint on it but nonetheless it still works I do like to have a little bit of color I really like the yellow you know when I was experimenting uh, around with these jig heads yellow seemed to be a pretty good uh, color and uh, and then this is the shrimp tail which I'll go over in more detail um, with you when I when I give you a close-up of all these but it's about a three inch shrimp tail uh, and it has no legs on it because you want it to go straight down you want it to have a smooth path it doesn't have any antennas on it and it doesn't have any eyeballs on it if you get one that has eyeballs or antennas first thing you do is clip those off but um yeah this is um, one of my jigs that I made. It's got the 8.0 hook, as I discussed in my swim bait uh, presentation about using swim baits. The one thing a little bit different is on a shrimp tail jig, you're going to want a loop knot. And the reason you want a loop knot is because you, you are going to be making your shrimp tail go up and down up and down with the jerking motion so you do want to have that swiveling action of a loop knot um, and and that's what I got here now as far as the the leader and the line this is good old Andy 80 pound mono as I discussed in my other uh, seminars with the flare hawks um, and and also the um, swim baits this is my go-to this is my go-to leader at night 80 pound and uh, I don't know if you can see it I'll probably be too close here but um, in this particular case I got a I got a uni to uni knot tied on here and I got about 30 or 40 pound um, power power pro on here now um, with this kind of fishing you're gonna want a good stout rod this is very old school. This is one Dave Justice gave me after I took him fishing one night. Um, this this is a Fenwick inshore. You're not going to find this anywhere, but you can find similar rods. Um, and you know, um, you, you're going to want like an eight foot rod, um, maybe seven six, something like that. But you're going to want to have plenty of backbone on the rod, and you're going to want to have a sensitive tip. Because, you know, when you're trying to bounce the jig off the bottom, you're going to need to know exactly when it hits the bottom. And, you know, you're going to toss it out. 
in this in this case with the with the jigs you don't want to make a really long cast because you don't want to lose touch with what's going on and you don't want the angle to be too steep you don't want your line angling way out like this you know you you're only going to want to make like a hundred 120 foot cast at the most and then you're going to free spool it down to the bottom and in this case I do like um, the bait caster a lot better than the spinning reel. And this is why. Um, because as you can see how I have my fingers, my fingers are holding the line. And when it hits the bottom, click the reel, engage it. And then I know it's on the bottom. And I'm feeling what's going on um, with these two fingers. And then I'm going to click it and in gear and then i'm going to lift the rod up like that to make that movement that movement of that um you know 18 to 24 maybe 30 inches off the bottom so you want to hop it off the bottom and then when it hits again you're going to lower your rod tip so it can hit the bottom again and when you feel it hit again you're going to immediately pop it up off the bottom like this and then you know you're going to reel in the little bit of slack you're only going to want to go like a couple of feet when you're popping it off back towards you maybe a foot maybe the, the less you move it the better if you can get it to stay in one place you know and there's not a lot of current just hopping it up and down uh, you know gradually coming back towards you is a good way to do it now the snook are going to be sitting there and they're going to see this thing going up and down up and down like that and um when it starts to go back down that's when they're going to try to nail it all your hits are going to be when it's going down they it's almost like they can't stand it they do not want it to you know get to the ground it's it's probably because if it gets to the bottom it's liable they're liable to lose track of it it's probably going to burrow in the sand or the mud or whatever and they'll never see it again so they instinctively want to intercept it before it hits the bottom and that's when you're going to feel that thump and it's going to be un unmistakable that it's a snook because it's going to thump you're not going to catch too many other different kinds of fish doing this you know you may catch a tarpon or a goliath grouper but you're really not going to catch anything uh, other than snook i'd say 99 percent of what you're going to catch is going to be a snook unless you know there happens to be some tarpon around um and you know you see them rolling around but most of the time a snook is going to hit it and when he hits it, you know, you're going to have to have your drag locked down. And, and my reel that I have here is my Okuma uh, 463 with the power handle. So, yeah, this isn't even locked down hard enough. So, you know, you're going to want to tighten this up. Make sure they can just barely pull a little bit of line off of here. And uh, that's, that's, that's the kind of drag you're going to want. You can, if you're really <laughs> think there's really big ones you know you can lock it down all the way and the reason we use this 80 pound test and these 80 hooks is because we're going to be applying maximum pressure and we don't want this to bend we don't want this hook to bend and we don't want this leader to get frayed through on this intense short battle that you're going to have. You know, the battle is going to be, you know, two minutes at the most. And uh, you're going to be trying to pry a fish away probably from a bridge piling or a jetty or something like that. Because uh, that's where these fish are going to be laid up near jetties and in the inlets or near the bridges and the intercoastal somewhere where there's a good amount of flow and somewhere where they're probably going to be shrimp flowing through um, at, at any given time so that's why you want to have the heavy duty tackle you want to have the lockdown drag and you want to have a nice heavy duty rod and you know you don't need you don't need a nine foot rod because you're not going to want to cast it too far if you if you get too much angle out there you're going to be getting snagged when you hit the bottom um unlike other kinds of fishing you know with the flare hawks you know you can keep it off the bottom this kind of fishing you want the jig to hit the bottom you want it to hit the bottom but you don't want it to stay on the bottom because there's all kinds of other people's lines down there there's all kinds of you know branches who, who knows if you're near a bridge there could be shopping carts all kinds of 
snags and things like that. But you do want it to hit the bottom, and then you want it to pop it up. Sometimes, sometimes in some locations, when the tide gets running too hard, you know, you can't even do this kind of fishing because your braid, once your jig hits the ground, the braid will be pushed down to the bottom, and it'll just it'll get tangled on what's underneath there. So you got to really be nimble. That's why you, you know you want your your other finger here to know exactly the second it hits, and then pop it back up. Hits the bottom, pop it back up. Now you can do it, you know, with um, your spinning reel, but you just got to be super careful uh, and and be sensitive and have a sensitive tip to where you know when the uh, jig is hitting the bottom and a heavy current. You know, anybody can tell when uh, your jig hits the bottom and a relatively light current or no current. But when you have heavy current, you know, it's going to hit the bottom and the line's going to be coming back towards you. So, you know, th that's going to give you a hard time detecting uh, exactly when it hit the bottom. And once the line starts coming back towards you uh and and you're getting some slack on the line that's when you know you could get hung up so getting hung up is part of the game too so don't worry about it if you get hung up you know that's why you want to get um, these cheap jig heads that you either buy in bulk or you make yourself or you know in the shrimp tails you want to have bulk shrimp heads you know shrimp tails rather that you um that you get in bulk for relatively cheap because you're going to be breaking off on the bottom all the time and you know it's better if your jig head you know you've only invested like you know a dollar in the jig head and you only invested a dollar in the shrimp tail so you know you're out two bucks if you busted one off um, but you know these flare hawks these days they're costing four or five six bucks and uh, you know swim baits you know they're costing a lot more so the shrimp tail is a good economical way to uh, to fish for big big snook the snook will react to the shrimp tail going by it's you can get a fish to eat on what's called a reaction bite when the jig um, goes by them and it goes down sometimes they're not even hungry it's just an instinct they see the shrimp and they just dart after it you know uh, instinctively on a reaction bite they may not have been paying attention or anything, but they just see that thing going down and they automatically, you know, will zip, you know, two or three feet and grab it. And um, then that's when you got to hang on. But you can get you can get fish to bite when they're not even hungry. You know, you might try swim baits, you might try flare hawks, but then you pull out the shrimp tail and all of a sudden, even if the shrimp aren't running, they'll hit this thing. Um, they may have not eaten a shrimp in weeks, but you know, this shrimp goes by them. They're going to, they're going to try to pounce on it. So that's why it's good. You don't have to waste a lot of time trying to, trying to catch live bait. You know, you can always have a bunch of these in your tackle box. You know, if, if you're a live bait fisherman, you strike out, you don't get any, uh, live bait. You can't find the mullet. That's when you pull out the shrimp tail jig and you, you know, bounce it along the bottom where the snook are laying, where, you know, maybe the mullet ran through the day before and their snook are all still there. And then they see a shrimp and they're like, oh, a shrimp. I haven't had a shrimp in a long time. I want a shrimp. I want something different. So, yeah. Or maybe they're just like, hey, I don't eat anything at this point. I'll, you know, change my diet and I'll go for this shrimp. Whatever it is, you can get bites on a shrimp tail jig from um from a good snook you know even if they're not hungry and the greatest thing about this uh, when i was fishing in broward i used these almost exclusively and they were great for slot size snook i know a lot of people like to catch slots these things were great for slot snook you know you'd get some big ones and you get some little ones but you know I was coming back with slots like, you know, every other trip, uh, maybe even more than that. So, yeah, you know, who can complain about coming home with a slot every trip or every other trip? You know, that's what a lot of guys live for. That's what I lived for when I was fishing these things in Broward was trying to get the slot sized snook. You know, you'll get the bigger ones, but you'll also get the slot size, which is what I know a lot of people are like and a lot of people are after. 
All right. Another thing, um, Dave, just as Tommy, is that you don't necessarily have to bring your lure back uh, with the tide. You know, you cast into the incoming tide or the tide coming towards you. You know, that's how you typically would set up. And you typically you'd be bouncing the jig, you know, back towards you. If the current is not too heavy, you can actually cast it, you know, and go against the current, especially if you got a heavier jig, like one of these one and a half ounce um, jig heads, you can bring it back against the current and it's going to stay in the strike zone longer if you're going against the current. Now, a shrimp doesn't swim against the current. I don't know why. Uh, Dave thinks that you know when the jig hits next to him and comes you know comes from behind and hits him, uh, they're like, "Whoa, what is that?" And then they jump out and grab it. So, you know, don't automatically think that a hundred percent of the time you need to bring your jig with the current. I know a lot of guys will tell you that's the only way to do it, but you know, hey, if you're not getting any bites, why not try casting? You know, and bringing your your jig. Uh, against the current you got nothing to lose you're not getting any bites might as well try it might as well see what happens you know they may they may bite it you might have been trying with the current for two hours and all of a sudden you go against the current boom you get bit hey you know you can't go wrong by getting bit and trying new and different things all right let's talk about some of the shrimp tails that are available and let me go through a little bit of a history lesson because i've been doing this since about 2004 2005 something like that um, there was a company that dave justice told me about called hoggy and that's h-o-g-i-e out in texas they made a chubby shrimp tail that's what you're looking at here this pink one i got a bunch of them from them um, eventually, Hoggy, you know, changed their mold and their design now is more of this wider tail, which it's okay. I don't like it I, as much as the original. So um, I have now um, gotten a guy uh, called Devin on Hooked on Jigs, you know, give you the link. He has a, a site on Etsy to make me a replication of this mold um, from the old mold of the hoggy shrimp and uh, so this is basically what I have now um, and uh, I have bunches of these I still use these but I, I want to use up these you know um, before I use any more of these wider styles as far as the colors you know my color preference has kind of fluctuated over the years but the my favorite color is is got to be like this um it, it's almost kind of like a almost like a root beer it used to be called cuervo gold now cuervo gold looks a little different than these but these two colors something similar to that or this one here are my favorite colors um overall now i still like to if i'm not getting a bite on this i'll show i'll throw the pink and this one's called a coke bottle color because guys older people may remember the coke bottles used to be dark green uh, or light green i guess that is and this kind of replicates that coke bottle color um I, I don't know if uh, Hoagie or uh, Hooked on Jigs will replicate that color, but I, it was one of my favorites. And then this is an avocado color, avocado metal flake. Um, those are still being made. Now, um, I also have used these Exude shrimps, um, not the fantail. This is the 3.75 inch shrimp. Uh, and I think this is the new penny color. I don't even think those are available anymore. I think Mr. Twister either went out of business or um, no longer sells them. But you can find them, you know, at some tackle store. Still, they're still leftovers. And what you want to do is you want to cut off the sh these little legs. You don't want to have any eyes sticking out. You don't want to have any legs sticking out. Now, um, this is a Monster 3X. 
Um, I also saw where like Captain Harry's was out of these. Uh, I don't know if they're in business anymore. But anyway, Monster 3X, they used to be um, quite popular. And, and uh, I think they were advertising all over, you know, the Internet as well. Um, and I would also, I would cut the eyeballs off of this one and uh, use that. And this is kind of like a salt and pepper color. Um, and then this is um, Salt Strong's um, Power Prawn USA. And uh, I would cut the eyeballs off of this one too. I don't think you want in our application the eyeballs. It'll just make the, the jig not go down as straight. So just take a little scissor and snip those off. But the Power Prawn USA, I just I looked online and you can get um, a bag of a hundred if you're a non-member for like a hundred and three dollars. If you're a member, you can get a bag of a hundred for like eighty-three dollars. That's like eighty-three cents for for one of these shrimp. You can't beat that. So um, if you're a member, or even if you're not a member, um, you know I'd go for the bag of a hundred. I like what they call the new penny color. Um, it's it's more similar to these colors and this color here. I don't I don't have one. Um, this is kind of, I think, a slam shady color, they call it. But anyway, these are some of your choices. I also have heard that uh, no live bait needed, NLBN, has um, designed also a shrimp tail. But as far as I know, it's not on the market yet. And one other thing about the shrimp tail jigs, um, you can take this same design here, the smaller shrimp tail jig, and instead of you know using the heavy weight, the one and a half ounce jig head, you could put it on like a three eighths ounce, and this is great for fishing the flats. This is great for under the docks. This is great for you know um, where I really like this, where this really shines, is fishing the dock lights. Now that's a whole nother subject that I'm really not on, but you know if you got a bunch of these and you got some jig heads. Put these on your light tackle and you can have a blast using that and that's pretty much what um, salt strong promotes is using these guys on their light tackle setups um, much smaller hooks and jigs like this um, but if you want to haul out you know the 40 incher you want this 80 hook on a heavy duty jig on 80 pound test um, and you know 30 pound braid if you, if you want to get the big one and you want to haul them out from structure that's what I've been doing since about 2004 2005 and uh, yeah it works um, you know you, you don't want to um, wreck them off using too light a tackle because you never know when that big one's going to suck down one of your little shrimp tail jigs Let's talk about the time of year. This is the time of the year in the winter. It's now uh, early February. And uh, this is when the shrimp are running down in South Florida. Uh, I don't know about other areas of the state, but when the shrimp are running, that's obviously a good time to use a shrimp tail jig. But it's not the only time. I use them all year round in Broward. And I did well with them all year round. It didn't seem to matter, you know, uh, what time of year it was, but... There was a definite pickup in the bite if the shrimp were running in some of the inlets in Broward County. And the same in Miami. When the shrimp are running, you want to use that shrimp tail jig. And there's going to be tarpon mixed in there if you're in the right locations and know, and know where they are. Now, as far as the tide is concerned, um, I would, you know prefer the outgoing tide or in one spot I would actually prefer the slack tide because there were so many obstructions on the bottom if the tide got running too hard I couldn't use the jigs you know when the tide was really ripping I would get snagged all the time so yeah don't disregard a complete slack tide you know the fish kind of wander around a little bit more on the slack tide and then when the tide starts really ripping, they'll hunker down behind, you know, the rocks and the um, 
piers and the and the jetties uh, and also in the uh, and the bridges they'll get behind the pylons and things like that and the walls and they'll you know hunker down in those areas and they won't be swimming around quite as much then you'll have to try to keep your your lure going you know in in those spots where they're hunkered down near the fenders and things like that but you know that doesn't mean that the tide can be going either way the the fish are going to be you know hungry on either tide you just you got to know where they are they might be moved a little bit um different so they're hunkered down on the other side of the wall or the other side of the jetty the other side of the fenders you know you never know so don't just say oh this spot is only an incoming tide spot or this spot's only an outgoing tide spot i've caught fish on all tides on all spots and you know you just might have to move like 200 feet or 100 feet or even less you know to find out where they relocated once the tide changes but yeah you know if you do find a spot just you get no bites on a certain tide well then yeah try to plan accordingly but if you can only go a certain time uh, in the tides wrong don't exclude you know that night just go anyway see what you can do maybe you learn something maybe you learn they just moved 50 feet over and uh, they were there the whole time and you still were able to get a bite on the tide that you thought was the wrong tide all right as a bonus for everybody that stayed with me this long let me tell you another little secret these jigs don't work just on snook at night you take these out to the reef and you can catch some really nice muttons, groupers, and other kinds of snappers. They also, kingfish will also bite them. Uh, I caught my largest grouper ever in the dry tortugas, which is featured right here. And uh, it hit the shrimp tail jig. All right, that's going to be a wrap. Um, if you have any questions, please put them in the comments. And I'll try to answer your questions as best I can. And as always, tight lines, Jay.